Hey guys, it's Matt Golds from GamersCast, and today I wanted to tell you about my experience with the Elder Scrolls Online. Now, I realize the Elder Scrolls Online is in beta, um, so I'm not really going to penalize it for any of the bugs or anything that I may have encountered, though I will admit for a beta, it was even then surprisingly stable. And I've been in part of the last three or four beta sessions, and in the last one it was pretty much almost perfect because they were trying to stress test the servers and uh, a lot of people but overall very 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 stable um i believe they're calling the mega servers um but point is that any good bugs i may have encountered are not um subject to ridicule in these preview it's mainly about the gameplay and what i overall think of the game and whether i think it's worth it to you guys to purchase for your hard-earned money. Uh, I will say this, it's very, very, very similar to the Skyrim UI, um, but at the, and it's very similar to the Skyrim style. It's de They definitely wanted to make it easy to jump into for people who have played Skyrim. That's the first thing I noticed right off the bat. You can play it in third person or first person. I, I'd, since it's an Elder Scrolls game, I'd recommend first person, though I did get a bit accustomed to third person, but I don't know, you, you get a much better depth of sense of the world when you do play in the first person mode. Um, pretty sure in all the footage shown here, um, I was in the third person mode, but whatever. Anyway, uh, the game, the there is an absolute shit ton to do, and I mean a shit ton to do. There are hundreds of hours of play, definitely, to be had here. That's what's... Um, Bethesda says they're going to be constantly adding lots of new quests, lots of new missions. Uh, my only problem with the quests themselves, as it it seems to be a lot of fetch, not re not really a fetch quest, but it's like you run somewhere, you talk to some guy, then you run somewhere really far away to do the quest, and then you will run all the way back to redeem the quest and complete it. Running there and finishing the quest doesn't do it. You have to go back and redeem the quest as completed. Kind of like in Borderlands. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of that because it seems, it seems like a lot of running back and forth unnecessarily. Um, another gripe I had with the game, probably one of the bigger gripes for those of you who are expecting a full-on Skyrim MMO experience. Um, it's the way that the grouping works in ESO. Um, the grouping, it's very, very odd because you can make a group and you can make a party, but when you go ahead and do things, it doesn't create an instance of, say, a cave or a dungeon for just your group. It just, the game acknowledges you're in a group. It tells you where everyone else in the group is. But it doesn't do anything beyond that. Like, it'll show you where a little arrow um, where everyone else in your group is, but that's that's really about it. And that's um, a little disappointing to me. So, let's say if a, mon a quest said, um, kill um, these four monsters. Each one of you would have to kill four monsters. You be Just because you're in a group doesn't mean that your objectives are collective. You can, liter you can literally do whatever you want at all with the group. At any time so you could be doing a completely different quest like there, there's no sense of cohesiveness with the grouping system itself and anyone else who's running around any random could just as well be in your group like quests don't feel like they're your own quests because anyone if you're working on an enemy forever some guy can just run out of nowhere and slash the final kill and, and it happens all the time and I run around and I do it all the time because it's just, it's sort of just what's done um, and right now, that's sort of my biggest issue with the game is the way that the um, party system handles. Um, I really hope that's addressed. Like I said, it's an MMO, so it's designed to be around for the long haul. So it, that's one of the things that I really um, hope they fix. And like, like I said, it's, it's designed to be around for the long haul. So I'm just talking, speaking about the game based on my experience as of the date of this video. Um, so you have to keep that in mind, too, if you're looking at this two years down the road, you're like, oh, no, they have a... No, you, you, you have to view it from the point of this um, time period, the perspective of this video. I will say this, though. The game has an absolutely gigantic, and I mean gigantic overworld. 
all of Tamriel is around to explore. Skyrim, Cyrodiil, Hammerfell, Vendorvall, Morrowind. It's all there, and it's all awesome, and I freaking love it. Um, it isn't um, exa it's not quite a cut and paste of the overworlds from um, Sky um, Elder Scrolls 4 and 5. The, the, the layouts are different, but the aesthetic stays true. So that's a really good thing. I really, I'm overall, I like the game because it gives you this giant sense of exploration, this giant sense of immersion. Um, and that's probably one of my favorite things about it is that there is so much to go off and explore and there is so much to do. Um, other than that, the only other problem I had with the game is it seems to be designed I don't want to say as a time suck, but it's like kind of it's kind of grind heavy because there was this one point in the beta where I was just killing everything pretty easily and then I go to this one area and then everyone's just completely over leveled me and then it's like, well, I guess I can't do that quest until I grind. It, it, it was just a, it was just some sort of odd break that kind of threw me off and that made me think are they designing this thing to be a time suck because there is a subscription fee for this thing. So, that kind of threw me off a bit, too. Um, let's see what else. Um, it, that's basically my main thoughts, my main issues with the game. Um, there are a lot of quests to do. A lot of them are very, very fun. Even if there's a lot of walking distance involved, the qu their quests are fun. There is some fast travel. It's limited, but you have to... Um, you have to activate these posts in order to fast travel, and it does cost gold to fast travel. So a lot of the time, you'll find that you'll want to end up walking more, and it kind of discourages fast traveling. But it is there in case you do get a lot of gold. And let's be honest, in most games, gold and currency be does become irrelevant over time. I, I can't think of many games where it doesn't become just free-flowing at one point to the point where it's like, I don't know what to do with all this money. Um, that's just that's just me speaking from generalities perspective. That's not an uh, Elder Scrolls thing, obviously. When you only have a weekend to play a beta, you can't really tell if the gold is just going to come rolling in because I haven't had that experience with gold so far. Um, lots and lots of fun to be had. Um, would I recommend getting this game, though? It's a hard sell. It's, it really is, and it pains me to say it's a hard sell, because I did like the game, and I liked a lot of things about the game, but it's, it's a normal $60 game. But on top of that, it's $15 every month. That's very pricey for one game. Now, I understand there's mega servers and stuff, but the PC people, the Xbox people, and the PlayStation people are all on their own servers, so it's not cross-play. Um, in that regard, I know a crossplay is a Sony term, but it, you can't play um, diff with people in different consoles and different platforms. Everyone has their own mega server to roam around on, and that's a bit of a disappointment. Um, but whatever, so be it, I guess. Um, obviously, the build of the game I've been playing has been the PC one, as I believe that's the only one that's had a beta yet. I know there's a PS4 beta coming out soon. Um, haven't really had any experience with that yet because there's, it hasn't been out yet. But, um, that's what I think about the game. Because $60 to buy, $15 a month, and then I don't know how they're going to do expansions. Because I feel like when you're paying $15 a month, I feel like expansions should just be included and patched in for free at that point. Quote unquote free. But at the same time, WoW doesn't do it like that. So you, you, you don't, it's... It's up in the... I don't know if they announced how they're doing expansions or anything like that, but it seems... Right now, it seems like they're just going to be adding quests and patching quests in on the fly, but as for physical expansions, I have no idea what they're doing with that. And that, But that's just something to consider. If they are paid expansions, that's another hit at the wallet. It's a lot of money and a lot of time um, to dedicate to one thing. So that alone is the main reason for me that it's a very hard sell. Um, other than that, though, um, I like the game. I would definitely recommend it if it wasn't for that subscription fee. But uh, let's see what happens. Um, if you've played the beta yourself or if you had any thoughts about anything I've said or had any questions about The Elder Scrolls Online, leave a comment down below. I'll be sure to look at them and possibly answer <laughs> if I do. Yeah, um, that's it for me. Check out the newly launched GamersCast.com 
I've been Matt Goldsman. I'll catch you guys next time.